So there's this Japanese word, hafu, and is a term used for a person that is half Japanese and half any other race. Okay, now according to a website called diversityabroad.com with data from CIA.gov, almost 99% of this population is 100% Japanese. Simply meaning that there's not much melting pot going on here. Here's something that stuck out to me in this article it was the word xenophobia. Simply the dislike and prejudice against people from other countries. Now, the article would also give sort of a brief history lesson uh, about Chinese and Korean migrant workers and how they had to endure some type of, you know, racism. 25 years ago, can we all get behind that we were all a little more racist and less tolerant back then? Not us, not me and you. I'm talking about the, you know, the bad people. So I just wanted to bring you guys back to 1997, okay? That's when a beautiful baby girl was born by the name of Hana Kimura, and she was a hafu. Now, if you've never heard her story, then you're about to hear one of the saddest tragedies during the social media era that was committed by a society, the Japanese society, that was just a little less than tolerant. Everything is linked below, guys. I am just the messenger. Don't shoot me. Just graze me if you have to, but shoot, shoot the guy who wrote the article behind me. And there's a major twist in this story that hopefully teaches all of us to look before we leap to conclusions. My name is Monks. Though I'm not a hafu, my mom still won't tell me why I'm the darkest in the family. <sighs> On September 3rd of 1997, Hana was born to her Japanese mom, Kiyoko Kimura, and an Indonesian father, but he abandoned her when she was just one years old and his identity is unknown and who gives a shit anyways? That piece of shit. Anyways, growing up, Hannah would be teased and bullied for being mixed, which in no little way would impact her self-perception going forward as it would anybody. And her mother, who was a professional wrestler, was her rock. She loved and admired her mother's strength inside and out and wanted to be just like her. She began to mimic her mother's wrestling moves. And by 2005, at just eight years old, she started winning wrestling competitions, leading up to training at a professional wrestling academy in her teenage years. So let's just get this out of the way, okay? The type of wrestling that we're talking about here is more along the lines of WWE, say, you know, scripted entertainment, as opposed to something like you would see in the Olympics or whatnot, okay? So she would compete in these various competitions and she was well received by the audience and considering this was the daughter of the beloved Kyoko Kimura who was set to retire at this point in her career they would have a farewell match just for the fans mother versus daughter and she would go on to defeat her own mom symbolizing you know the passing of the torch and Hana would parlay this bit of fame into various acting roles and appearing in music videos and then she got her big break she was to be casted on a hit reality show called Terrace House. Now, the premise of this show is rather simple. Three men and three women live in the same house as a camera crew follows them along and trying to pick up any developing plot lines. Okay, What the producers is hoping that will happen is that love will blossom amongst the hand-picked cast. Viewers raved about the show's authenticity, no over-the-top drama. Like other reality shows, this show was their show and it was real. So the show first aired in 2000 and it was so popular in Japan, even the likes of Netflix couldn't keep their grubby paws off in and added it to their catalog. Now, you can go ahead, log into your Netflix right now and you can watch Tara's House. But there's a few episodes on there that were scrapped from his chapters altogether, and those were the episodes that Hannah was in. And let's go ahead and talk about why that is. So in the 2019-2020 season of Terrace House, fans would be introduced to the bubbly, beautiful, but fierce 21-year-old Hannah Kimura. Now, unfortunately, for Hana, her strong personality didn't win her many fans in the beginning, as she would play up her wrestling persona a bit too much, as some cast members would uh, remark. And uh, don't forget, these are the fans of Terrace House, okay? These, these guys are really diehard fans, and they appreciated the show because why? 
because it was real. So Hannah had to tone it down a little bit. But every show needs a heel, you know, a bad guy, a person that is disliked. Okay, it, it, it allows space for character development, for character arcs, and an audience can always appreciate, you know, a, a, a bad guy turning good. Whether negative or positive, you know, Hannah was still popular and the ratings remain strong. And now we finally reach what we can only refer to as the infamous episode. And that was an episode called The Costume Incident. And the premise here is rather simple, okay? So Hannah is doing her laundry, but within that laundry, there was a most prized possession. It was a wrestling costume that she had paid $900 for, and she loved it. She would dramatically refer to this outfit as being the most important thing next to my life, okay? She knew what drama was. She was from that wrestling world. Now, she would finish up her laundry. She would gather everything up and be gone with. Now, the next housemate was a man named Kai Akamura, and he would just go ahead and do his laundry. Takes it out, puts it in the dryer, and like any guy, we would probably burn our clothes to hell in the dryer. When he takes it out, he notices that there is an article of clothing in there that does not belong to him, okay? So he shows Hana, and she looks at it, and it's her beloved costume, but it has been fried to hell. It has shrunk a whole size. It was ruined, and this made her very upset. Now, the situation would escalate when during a table scene with the other housemates, including Kai, she goes into a long rant. え、今ビビの彼女に全部話しさせてんの。She behaved in a manner that the public felt was unwarranted. Their sympathy was on Kai's side, and this opened up the floodgates of hate which exploded on social media. Now, I'd really love to give you guys some of the mean tweets and translate them for you. I do not know how to read Japanese, so I cannot do that. But I did find a YouTube channel called What the Japanese Are Talking About This Week. And I was able to find some of the mean comments that was bombarded on her social platform. And this fine gentleman was able to translate it for us. Okay, so the first one we have here is, Please, don't appear on TV again. I used to be a big fan of Terrace House, but you made me really, really sick. Man, just leave the show. You're sick. You made me sick. Instead of trying to find a boyfriend, try being an adult first. Now, these two comments use the word sick in reference to Hana. Now, which I think being translated to English might not sound as harsh as the commenters were intending. Haven't you had enough? Less people will watch Terrace House because of you. It's unpleasant. Now, these comments, these feel rather subdued to me? Does it feel subdued to you? But in Japan, this might be very harsh. And let's just put it this way. Hannah tried to keep up that fiery persona that she's been doing, you know, that she created for the show as best she could. She would play into the hate by responding that it was 100% Kai's fault, even going as far as saying that she's going to make him pay for that costume. But you know, you could only pretend for so long to be something that you're actually not. And her nature won out, and she would apologize to the fans of the show, which would satisfy them, 
surprisingly, and actually keep the internet trolls at bay. But you know how this works. They're just laying in wait like a bunch of snakes for you to make that wrong move. And let me tell you a little bit about the structure of this show, okay? So, in Japan, when you do a reality TV show, it's similar to what you can expect in an American TV show, except they sometimes have these panel of personalities. I would guess they are celebrities or former celebrities in Japan, and they would watch the show along with you. And they would give you their takes, their opinions about the characters and the situations. Similar to watching sports with commentators, right? Very similar to that. And of course, we just accept them as experts, which pretty much gives them the power to veer the viewer's perspective on particular cast members. So on the May 12th episode of Terrace House, they had on a comedian. And he saw Hana. She was joking around. She was even wearing a wrestling costume. Not the ruined one. But this opened a door for this comedian to poke a little fun. And he jokingly remarked, Hana, even though you lost the most important thing to you next to your life, it seems you're able to smile again. Now, seemed innocent enough, but this brought back into the public consciousness the costume incident. And the snakes that were laying in wait would pounce again. Hateful comments began to populate Hannah's feeds once again. She was reliving the nightmare once again. It's a compounding nightmare. Because if we go back to Hannah's past, she's basically been bullied her entire life. And so she's been living with this pain since she was a kid, being bullied for being different, not fitting into the only society that she ever knew. Her mental health had never been stable due to this. She fell in and out of depression, and to her credit though, she was able to persevere and create something wonderful herself, and then another misstep. Everybody saw it, and everybody pounced. Your parents didn't let you work in a regular company. Do you know what that means? It shows in the shared housing that you can't do what is normal to others. Leave. Now, the translation might be a bit off. I'm not sure, but I assume the person is suggesting that Hannah, because she's a wrestler entertainer, that she doesn't know how to treat regular people and she treats them poorly. And to just leave the show. Now, the hate that I've shown you are decent examples, but we need to grasp the magnitude of having that negativity piling up in the thousands. And even when Hannah would do a live stream to talk about her wrestling, nothing to do with Tara's house, the viewers from Tara's house that just did not like her would hop in, make fun of her. They were just there to ridicule her and have a good time at her expense. And this would go on for two straight months. This could fuck with anyone's head. So Hannah started posting pictures of herself and people that actually cared about her knew that it was a persona. You know, the people with common sense would notice in those pictures some injuries, you could say, that they figured was self-harm. Now, they would respond with caring messages, but those, of course, were overshadowed in comparison to the fucking monolith of hurtful vitriol. Sorry about that word. So here we get to the point of the video where I will say that your discretion is advised. There will be subject matters that may be triggering to some. My chair just went down. So on May 22nd of 2020, Hannah posted a photo of her and her cat, but she was telling it to live a long and healthy life and a simple goodbye. Fans knew that something was wrong. There was something ominous in the post and they tried their best, you know, as they do to fill her comment section with positivity and you know, like little reminders that not to do anything drastic and that there are people out there that do care about her. Now, sadly, I don't think she even saw any of it. She would next text her mother this very simple message. Thank you for giving birth to me. So how can I say this? Hana Kimura, she had reached a breaking point in her life where she had come to grips with certain things and she had accepted certain things and she was perfectly fine leaving everything the way it was, so to speak. 
She released a toxic gas in her room. She took a plastic bag and placed it on her head. I didn't get too much information about this part, but I assume with the combination of toxic gas and asphyxiation, that was how she self-ended herself. Now, I just want to add this, that if you want a glimpse into who someone really is, look at the things that they do when they have nothing. Hana, in her final moments, made sure she bid farewell to those who cared to listen. She even left a note on the front door to indicate that there was poison gas inside that room so that no one else would be hurt by her actions. Hana Kimura, at the age of 22, had ended her life. And there is another example, another glimpse of how beautiful a person she actually was later on in this story. I just won't give it away now. So. As you can imagine, uh, the tragic news hit social media and the haters, those same idiots were nowhere to be seen. The ones that posted the most vile of comments scrambled like fucking rats to delete their posts and some even their entire accounts. The producers of Tara's house were quick to pull all the episodes with Hannah in them from all streaming services. Then her heartbroken mother, Kiyoko Kimura, would reveal something that would bring shame to every low-life troll that had nothing better to do than to be so invested in a TV reality show that they would attack her daughter, someone they didn't even know. Kyoko would give three major glimpses about the actual story. The first glimpse was a real bombshell about their beloved reality show, Terrace House. The scene that Hana berated Kai was scripted. Producers had forced Hana to do and say those things. Hana even pushed back about the idea, but they were just persistent. They were just unrelenting that this would be good for the show, it would be good for the ratings. Hana eventually just gave in because Hana's people-pleasing nature would win over. Now, after she agreed, the producers even wanted her to slap Kai. When the time came, Hana couldn't bring herself to slap him and wound up just knocking the cap off his head and walking away, which you could imagine had the producers pretty upset. Second glimpse was into who her daughter really was. She was just playing a role. She was funny. She was easygoing in real life. Her heart held tremendous pain from her experiences, but it remained pure. Even when the world turned against her, she never even betrayed the people around her. She could have easily outed the show for being scripted and veer the hate away from herself, but she remained solid. Even in the mind frame of self-ending herself, where she no longer had anything to lose or gain, she could have thrown everything under the bus, but she remained solid. Kai Akamura, the cast member at the sympathetic end of this public opinion, would break his silence and confirm everything. Producers had no choice now but to come clean as well. Terra's house, which was once celebrated as being real, was just fake as all the other bullshit that they've been watching on their TV screens. Which brings us to the final glimpse, which is the haters into themselves. They now started targeting the creators of the show, so... After wrongly directing their hate at Hannah, now they were just looking for something else to hate, which I think is mentally deficient. If you think about it, you know, for haters to hate on a thing that made them hate is like saying, you know, fuck you to a mirror because I don't like what I see. Suing McDonald's because it got you fat. The show was simply the mirror and it showed them that they were subpar humans. And they didn't like it. The show was then canceled entirely. And this would be a national scandal. And because of what happened to Hannah and the magnitude of the situation, there was an investigation. And I want you to get this. This is what they would uncover. 12,000 messages from hundreds of different accounts that had harassed Hannah. One man alone was so obsessive in his pursuit to belittle Hannah 
He created over a hundred accounts solely for that purpose. He would frantically try to delete all these accounts when the, the news broke of her death. But Hannah would actually have the last laugh because, because of how vile his messages were, she had screenshot a few of them. And the police got a hold of these and were able to trace it right back to him. Now, I'm not joking when I tell you this next part. He was tried, he was brought to court, and he was fined. 9,000 yen, I plugged 9,000 yen into Google. It told me that's $66.14. Multiple people were charged in this case, and you could expect multiple slaps on the wrist, which is like a multiple slap on the public's face. And of course, the Japanese public, the ones with common sense, were outraged with how their country was dealing with such a despicable case. But you could always count on mommy, right? The beautiful mother of Hana, Kyoko created a non-profit anti-bullying organization that was forcing the government to change, to, to create some reform. Okay, now, maybe we shouldn't hold our breath, but the Japanese government has said that they acknowledge that there needs to be set in place a stronger anti-bullying law, and I guess we just wait and see how that turns out. Now, I just want to say, this to end the video, to the beautiful Hafu, okay? We know you found that place that accepts you. You found that place of peace that you've always wanted. And we're sorry you couldn't find it while you were here with us. Just know that you helped move this archaic wheel of an old society, okay? The public outcry itself exemplifies your impact on this world. Just know you left this world a much better place than how you found it. And your life, your story is now cemented in history, you know, to help us as a whole do better. And for that, thank you, Hana Kimura. Now, for the rest of you guys, go protect the ones you love, and don't forget to love the ones that protect you. <laughs>